Yeah, it's an interesting pickup from Neon. I think that Pugna, you're getting a lot of value for it, not only in the push, as you mentioned, but for the disarm on that Ursa as well. So you have a way of mitigating the Ursa's damage output, and I think you have a pretty decent way of keeping your teammates alive as well with the Pugna and Phoenix. So there's some sustain there for Neon. Boom with the Murana, though. Um, that is a bit worrying. It, it can deal with the Phoenix nicely. It doesn't care for the shards. So if you're looking for easy support kills, that mainly lies on picking up that Witch Doctor. And of course, the Murana can just find steady EXP. You don't have the setup here. For an easy arrow from Boom, maybe if they draft in a Kunkka down the line, we've seen Boom pick that up. X arrow is pretty darn strong. But for now, you know, you're not looking at the most threatening arrows so far without any guarantee of it, at least. Yeah, absolutely not. See what they do have for a workaround with those Marana arrows. Maybe you just build into the Yules. Maybe you have a setup. We'll, we'll find out soon. Neon Esports, though, straight into the Faceless Void now, so... Even more great team fight. You do have that Pugna plus Void as well as the Egg on top of that from the Phoenix. Uh, so some very strong combinations coming out from Neon Esports. I wonder how Boom really want to counter this. Because you've already gone through both the supports of, uh, of Boom Esports. You can't go into anything like the, uh, the Shadow Demon now. Who can just disrupt the Void mm. or anything like that. You could always try to go for one of those big cores that can counter the Void. But... Things like the OD haven't been very popular as of late. No. Up against the Pugna, you're, not, you're never going to pick OD. It's, it's just not good. Uh, oh, yeah. So I wonder what Boom do now. I think if they did want the core that deals with that, we have seen core Shadow Demon. Like, uh, it's right. not too far out. I mean, I believe that's only been ice, but I think it's plausible if you really wanted a way of handling the Faces Void. Still a lot of potency there. Boom does pick up the Centaur, so they have a way of disengaging. Uh, I like Neon's draft a bit more. This is something they're very comfy with. We've seen them pull the Phoenix Void combination a couple of times now. There is a glaring weakness in that draft. That means you are reliant on those teamfight spells. So without the Chrono, without the Egg, you're probably not fighting as much as Boom would be. And that might cause some timing issues. You really have to be on point with the Chronosphere and with the Egg. Otherwise, you risk losing that space to boom once more. You definitely do. Neon Esports, final ban outs now. They are the first ones to get their ban out. But they are having a bit of a think about it. Of course, we are looking for the, the Makoto mid-hero uh, for the side of Boom Esports. Now, they have left the Nature's Prophet. For now. I don't necessarily think this is a very good idea. If you're going to leave that Prophet, and they do. They'll get rid of the Ember, which... Would have counted out that Pugna. I suppose maybe they're hoping for the Prophet so they can have the Pugna versus Prophet matchup if they're going to run that Pugna mm -hmm. mid lane. Which can favor the Pugna quite nicely. I still wouldn't leave it though. It's uh... No. If Makoto wanted to take it, which he may not, but if he did, Ten you've seen the performance he has on this hero. He, he kind of just gets out of control. Five that he does. Minutes. And... Well, in this case, I think the NP as a response overall to Neon's lineup, might not be the best considering you have to worry about the Chrono a lot. And NP doesn't do much against the Void, uh, unless you have that fast Orchid, which even Mikado could do once more. Uh, I think you do have some holes there. You also risk feeding a lot of the Treants to the Pugna. So maybe that's something that Neon is freely inviting. You do see Boom ban out the TA last, so they just don't want, don't want to deal with all the physical that the TA and Void can do with a well-placed Chrono, and it closes oh. out with the Invoker. Ooh. So that's hmm. one way to... I guess you can Tornado, you can Chaos Meteor, you can Deafening Blast through the Chrono, so as long as you don't get caught, it's one way to deal with the, uh, the Void. I believe the Tornado also purges off the Crepify from the Pugna, hmm. so that could be quite handy uh, throughout that mid-game, even the early game for that matter. Uh, apart from that... Is it a good Invoker game? I guess we'll wait and see how Makoto goes. I I can't say mm -hmm. I've enjoyed seeing the Invoker in this current meta. It just hasn't seemed yeah. very good. Yeah, it's been a bit slow. I think the one thing I worry about here is the matchup against Pugna. I think as long as the Nether Ward's up and running, it's always hard for the Invoker to 
constantly spam out the spells. It's going to be punishing. I wouldn't be too surprised if our Pugna did opt for more emphasis on the Netherworld this game. We've seen a couple of games where that was the case. So we'll see whether or not that's something Neon considers. Um, overall, there is still potency. You mentioned the combinations in the Chrono to throw off the Void, to purge off the Pugna. I think one big thing in there is straightforward alacrity Ursa. Like that is just going to hit like a truck. There's nothing to stop our Ursa from just going all out once you have the levels to get that done. Neon do close out with a Void Spirit, so it is going to be Yapage on the Void Spirit up against Mikato's Invoker, which can be a bit much better for the Void Spirit, especially with the first three levels. So Neon does have stronger lanes. They can play a bit faster. They have changed it out from game one. They're not going to be playing passive. They have to play perfectly around their timers, though. If they don't, they risk bleeding that space to boom anywhere. But they do. Should be a, a fairly interesting matchup now, with, especially with these drafts. Uh, I'd say I, I do like Neon Esports' draft a lot more than game one, that's for sure. So I think this game should be much closer uh, between the two. In fact, they could definitely just take out this matchup against Boom and try to force it to a game number three, but we'll wait and see that one out. Of course, it is a best of three series upper, upper finals, upper bracket finals. and Well, even if Neon do get knocked down here, they essentially will get knocked down to verse TNC later on tonight. But you, generally speaking, don't really want to be in that position. Even no. if, you do, if you do feel confident up against TNC Predator, you never know when they're going to bring out that TNC that we remember. Oh, yeah. And as well as oh, that, yeah. you know, you're one series away from getting knocked out if you are in that lower bracket. So, you'd really prefer not to go down that route, especially after making it through to the upper bracket uh, finals, or rather making it to the upper bracket round one, going into the upper bracket finals after this. Uh, we'll find out how it all pans out very, very soon. Which draft uh, did you did you favor, by the way? Did, were you kind of leaning towards Neon or Boom? Hmm. It's a bit tricky. I think both sides do have certain ways of dealing with the other this time around. I will say I, I do prefer Booms just a bit more because we have seen the Phoenix Void combination a couple of games where if you're forced to stagger that spell use, then this combination is very underwhelming. You really need the egg in the chrono to really maximize that. If, if Neon doesn't play around that, I think it falls apart. So... There's a lot more leeway for Boom. It's a lot more forgiving pull off their execution. The hardest part for Boom is Mikato. It's really the Invoker's early game that that is just very hard to secure. We'll see whether or not Mikato can pull that off. His lane matchup again, it's not the best for Invoker. Yapaj can certainly work this to his favor. So there's an answer here for each side. Top lane, FBZ, taking a bit of harass there from Skem, but Hyde's going to be around the area. Because Skem can't really fight into these uh, these three heroes of Boom right now. He'll have to just stick around on his side of things and make sure he doesn't give away that early first blood. So Playhard's going to have a quick look through the mid lane, see if he can uh, find an observer ward around that mid tower. They seem to know exactly where it is as well. He's going to go for a very early D ward here on that task. Uh, did he just put it out? Or, oh, he did. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. They they pinged it out as well. They they pinged out the exact ward location. And, oh, that's a shame. Oh, well. It's all right. Now you know exactly where it is. So, uh... <laughs> Uh, that that yeah. mid that mid river ward's always a little bit greedier because you can get the right side of this river. Let's see if you can find a, an observed ward around this area, but yeah, it wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're gonna find it next time. Still, if you look at the lanes, a much more standard opening from both sides. Looks like Neon will not opt for that first uh, first blood trial lane that you see with Tusk. They will just go straight to dual lanes to stabilize their start. That's always, uh... I, I do like seeing the Tusk in a trialing to begin with, but... Oh, Playhan, I, I guess he's just going to try and make sure he secures the uh, the lane a little bit here for Rappi. Of course, Rappi had a really rough game last time around, so I can't quite blame them for... For just making sure Rappi has a decent laning stage. 
so he can actually go into that mid game feeling a little more confident. Of course, Rappi's going to be up against Dreamer Souls Ursa, and the idea here is you can just decrepify him every single time he tries to go for a last hit. Uh, can be a bit easier said than done, though. If I'm if I'm honest, John, it's not as easy as you would hope. But I'm surprised he actually leaves that range creep to get denied. He had to decrep up. Yeah, it's hmm. uh, it is easier for Rappi to apply his pressure here. I, I don't think you're as constrained of a, as a Venomancer would be, but you know, as long as you're playing this way with your supports facing off, it comes a bit of a stagnant farming lane. You have to remember, Dreamer Cell does have Earthshock to get last hits with as well. So he's he's just going to be happy to drain the mana to find those creeps anyway. I wonder if he goes for the Nether Ward build on this Arpug. Now, for now, he's gone for the Nether Blast at level 2. We've been seeing a lot of that maxing out the Nether Ward over the past few days, but for now, he'll stay away from that. Because we'll have a quick look at the other lanes. Makoto, he'll be there up against Yopage in that mid lane. One would argue it should be favored for Yopage on this Void Spirit, but you just saw Makoto. He can purge off the Resonant Pulse uh, shield that you can get on the Void Spirit with Tornado. So that's one way to actually beat out the Void Spirit. Yeah, it's uh, Makoto is not finding as much last hits, but he is forcing a lot of pressure onto Yopage. I think that's all you really want as the Invoker for the most part. Just ensure the opposing mid laner doesn't have a massively snowball start. Buy out the time for your own uh, EXP buildup, and at some point, it will kind of equalize. That uh, top lane, Genuel, Hyde going at it. Gen Hyde's actually getting very low right now. He has to be very careful, but he does die. A nice very fire out from Genuel just at that last second will save him. So first blood this time around does go to Neon Esports, and... That's a much better start for them than last game. It certainly is. Like, uh, they're, they're keeping their lanes fairly stable. You're not missing out on too much farm as Skem. He is having a pretty good time here up top. Uh, the supports from Boom this time are forced to play a lot more passively, so you're not seeing those early rotations to mid to apply pressure onto your Paj. And overall, I think Neon, they should be very darn happy with this. You look to play hard to maybe get a rotation down mid. Once he hits level 3 on the Tusk, uh, you really just don't want the Invoker to have that good start. Beyond that, Neon's just getting the exact start they want with this kind of lineup. Yeah, well, playing hard's going to make that rotation right now. Doesn't really need the Snowball too much, I don't believe, but he might just be going to secure the Power Rune first. There are... Uh, well, you see your Paj already ready to try and take it for himself anyway. Play hard there just in case. But the top lane is being secured there from Hyde and Genuel. They're going to fight over it, but it is the bottom rune that spawns up. A nice double damage out for Yopage. That's actually a pretty big deal here as well. Like, Makoto might have a bit of a struggle up against this double damage rune. Yeah, it's a nice opening for Yopage. Oh, I mean, with the bottle pickup as well, that means he's going to have a lot of sustain. You already see Mikado constantly trailing behind by a creep wave, so it's not been a very good lane for an invoker, and this just kind of makes that a bit worse for him to deal with. Well, you can't really... It's very hard to win out this uh, this last hit war. Your Paj does go in now, but Makoto had the tornado. It seems impossible to beat a Void Spirit mid when it comes to CS. Uh, especially as that Quas Wex invoker, you just don't have that much damage. Uh, he's trying his best, but Yopage has been doing a great old job. Now it does activate the double damage rune at that, at that level 5 mark. Thought he may just want to wait for the, uh, the level 6 timing, but they do go in now. Yopage wanting to dish out the damage. He won't get the kill. Makoto. Just Tornado up again. and well, Genuel. Actually chasing, getting chased down right now by Hyde. Genuel, how are you going to get out of this one? Hyde, checking the Roshan, just in case he tries to juke him out in that Fog of War. Arrow, perfect from Hyde. And this time, Genuel will be the one to go down on the Phoenix. Just trades on the supports. Uh, again, both sides are a lot more uh, complacent with their lanes. They really would just want that initial farm instead. And they are getting it. Like, uh, this is really not favoring either side. Uh, so far, I think you will be happy with Neon. They will get their six, Aldo. Yeah, your punch has got an actual step, but the cold snap not going to be enough. He does juke out the EMP, and now we'll just step away. Hide a very, very close call. 
to get in that kill and all hide. You may have overextended now. Play hard's there. Aether Remnant as well. He has the haste rune in front of him, but he can't take it. And now Yopage takes it. Shard's going to be on point, and Yopage will be able to take the kill there on the Void Spirit. Yeah, it's uh, not the best, but that is finally a rot well, kind of a rotation coming out from Playhard to secure that, and Yopaj gets bailed out. So there is a lot more early activity here from Neon, and it is certainly helping the cause. You do look at the side lanes, though. The cores of Boom are still finding better farm. So despite that stable lanes, you're still getting a bit of a good start here from Boom. My arrow barely missing there onto Rappi. Down to that bot lane, Yopaj is now going to TP in on that Void Spirit. Very clear TP. He'll make a jump onto Keskut. Aether Remnant will lock him in with the Dissimilate. They will secure the kill. And now Yapage might try to go onto Dreamer Cell. Meanwhile, top lane, FBZ does end up dying as well. So, boom. Well, they don't lose Dreamer Cell, but they're having a much rougher game thus far. Currently find themselves 1-4 to four in terms of kill score. Uh, this is that point now with that Void Spirit. You might just see him consistently rotating around trying to find kills. Just based off the runes he gets. Even mid lane now. Kazakut's going to TP in. Did they spot out Yopage there? Looks like they didn't. The, well, this TP may not lead to anything. Yeah, it's a uh, bit of a waste. This does open the side lanes up just a bit more for Neon to find more pressure there. And oh, Yopage. Yeah, it goes on to the Kazakut. Does force out the Paralyzing Cask and will juke out with the Dissimilate. EMP, Tornado does not connect. The Cold Snap is there on Yopage, but now Hyde. I don't really know if you want to fight right now. Yopage is jumping in after him. They'll use the Maledict. Aether Remnant, though, doesn't lock him in. And now they'll try and turn. Arrow, Yopage, he didn't notice it. Went through his own Remnant. Now the cast flying through, Yopage. Should be okay. He'll walk out of it. Yeah, that's a bit of a scary situation, but... Still, he did have his supports around. This time around, Boom is freeing up their side lanes to have a bit more farm. I, I think the major concern for Neon right now is Dreamo Cell. Like, they have made rotations down bot, but our Ursa is still pretty much free farmed and having a lot of a better time than Skem is up top. Yeah, Skem's having a tough lane there up against FBZ. Uh, mid lane, Yopaj. Does end up going down those two supports in that mid lane rotating over. They do secure the kill there with Makoto, and now the smoke's going to be up from Boom. Straight down to that bot lane. Can they catch out Rappi or play hard? Looks like they can't, Makoto. Kind of backing off a bit, just seemingly a little confused as to what the play is here. And eventually we'll just give up on it, does back off was a bit unfortunate they smoked under ward so not really managing to find that opening they want still um i think one thing for neon is they need to make use of that chrono from scam although he's being jumped he is stampede gonna be on he does commit the chrono to try and get out of this the, it's all he can do arrow will fly through but it won't connect so scam will be fine that is your first chrono of the game though not exactly the way you want to expend it if you could avoid doing so and well, boom they'll set up for that top t1 tower now neon esports are doing the exact same thing down to the bot lane however and well mid lane makoto was getting grouped on by a couple supports there from neon but now he'll try and turn around with that tornado emp cold snap as well they burn do burn through the manor of Januel, but he doesn't need it for the icarus dive but the melodic damage once again from kesku gonna be enough to take him out yeah, it's a nice pickup for Boom. That also does give them the top tier one, but you did see Neon once more pick up the bot tier one themselves. So even trades overall, Boom still has a slight net worth lead, but they are getting off to a better start. I think the one thing you really want to see from Neon right now is level six in Januel. He is very close. So once you have that egg, you look for the next Chrono to really be forced in a bigger team fight situation. You really can pump a lot of damage out with just the Egg Chrono. Oh, Kazkut going to be in trouble. Great shards out from Play Hard. However, TPs are in. FBZ, who are we concentrating on? Well, Yapage, he's still trying to go after Kazkut, but he won't die. Rappi does finally take him out, but now the mid lane is all havoc. FBZ, he's going to be surrounded. Neon Esports, they've already taken down two. There's five heroes here from Neon. 
The Rappi going to be able to push real fast with that Nether Blast. But it seems as though the presence of FBZ is going to be enough to force them back. Yeah, it's a lot of commitment down mid. They do find a pretty nice kill onto Mikato. I think slowing down this Invoker is helping Neon a ton. So they're still finding a lot of objectives on the map. They're still finding the big pickoffs. They're giving Scam space to farm up. They should be playing around the tempo of Chrono next, but overall, Boom's timings are a bit slower than you'd want them to. Like, Dreamo Cell is still number one, but Mikado's farm is pretty slowed down. He is going for the Orchid right after, not opting for the Spirit Vessel, and just wants additional control in these fights. Can't really blame him for that. I think the Orchid's just going to pay off really nicely here for Mikado. Spirit Vessel can always come later on. Like, you haven't got too much to worry about. Play hard and rappy. They've smoked up. They're going to run up towards the top lane. They may run into Dream Assault, but that's not really the target you can afford to try and take out at the moment. And instead, maybe into the mid lane. Yopage is trying to bait out. Just going to follow him down where Makoto is waiting around in that... In that ghost form now going to turn around onto that void spirit but Yopage great dissimilate now the rest of the team is there Makoto he has been caught out and he will die very easily and with that they're going to head back into that mid lane yeah it's a good time for Neon to just force this tower out they've got the chrono they've got the egg with no invoker around that's the only real thing they have to mess up that combination it's an easy pickup for Neon gives him good control in that jungle and allows them to start invading and start finding additional farm in that area. That's a very good, uh, very good situation here for Neon. Can't skew it. Nice TP out on the Witch Doctor, realizing they are probably going to be coming down for him. However, Yopage. It's the game plan here, Yopage. He does get cold snapped up. Dissimulate back into hide. But uh, ultimately just wants to get out of that situation, so we'll just... Astro step out himself. It's like Boomer still just trying to wait on uh, on Kez, well not Kez Cube, but rather Dream Assault to, to be up and online with that Battle Fury. Still though, you're going to have Skem with the Maelstrom up fairly soon on that Void. Uh, even though he's still behind Dream Assault, he can arguably get involved much earlier on in this Void. And we haven't really seen that second use of the Chrono yet with that egg. They've been holding out on it. Yeah, it's uh, going to cost him a bit. You want that early press and a nice arrow onto your page, but it really just breaks up a gank attempt in that top jungle. But you would want to see that combo. You definitely want to start applying that pressure with your team. So far, though, I think Neon's going to be happier to just farm as they tend to. Like, this is just something Skem... Prioritizes, uh, prioritizes a lot more, and I think it's something Neon builds around as their base. Yopash, he uh, gets a haste rune for himself now, so he might feel like he needs to get more active. Skem is down there at the bot lane. He does spot out Dreamer Soul. Be a great kill to get here for Neon, as Dreamer Soul is the main target. So instead, they'll try and force a fight by pushing down this bot tier 2, though. No, they found Makoto. They just try to burst him out on the Invoker, and they do very quickly. Now Yopage is going to go straight onto that Kesku Witch Doctor. He really can't survive this much damage output, and he will die. Um, Neon is really starting to hammer it into Boom, especially on Mikado. Like, he's constantly breaking the smokes. But they've got dust. So, uh, the boom's just not finding anything in return beyond steady farm and dreamo cell. You look at him, he's just about 700 gold off of the Battle Fury. That's the moment when dreamo cell can join these fights and pump out the damage. It, it's becoming a big concern from boom, though, that Mikado's not finding the farm up. He needs the orchid to get control, and without it, um, the potency of this invoker is just, just not up there. He's still trying to farm that up. Neon Esports are around the area, so he will have to be a little bit careful. Uh, well, Dreamer Soul 
very close now to that B Fury, but you've got the Maelstrom now up on Skem. Pipe as well is going to be there on FBZ now, so perhaps... Now that you've got the Pipe, now that you've got the Battle Fury almost up, maybe then they'll go for a big smoke play. Yapage, mid lane, Chaos Media going to fly through, but that's only going to clear out the creep wave. Doesn't connect on the Void Spirit. As well as that, I, I wonder at what point Dreamer Soul says, let's go Roshan. I mean, you might just want to wait for that, uh, that Battle Fury timing. But you could just go right now as well. It just seems that they're not very confident knowing that Chrono is still available. Yeah, it's really risky to play in that pit up against Neon's lineup. Um, I do like that Boom is tempering themselves to be a bit more patient than they were in Game 1. You do take a nice Tier 2 top tower. So you have opened up the map just a bit, but I, I think until that Tier 1 mid is gone, the Roche is going to be a very hard objective for Boom to safely secure. Bot lane hide. The other one's going to be placed. They're going to go secure that bot tier 2 tower. Play hard. Going to try and harass hide out of here. FBZ, meanwhile, does get Genuol up that top lane. And hide will be able to just leap away. So it's a direct trade on those tier 2 towers up at the top of bot lane. FBZ going to run up to Skem. He's losing a lot of HP here. The snowball follow-up just to stun up FBZ. But he'll turn around now. Remember, you still have that chrono. So Skem, he could just commit here onto FBZ. But they have the Aether Remnant. The MP coming in. But they life drain him up and he will go down. Death Ward from Kezku. Not going to be enough to zone him out. But they do at least get Rappi as a trade. Uh, not the most amazing trade for Boom, but that is enough to push Neon back just a bit. They still managed to take that tier 2 bot, so they are pretty much trading a bit better in terms of objectives as well, as Neon does maintain the kill lead 5-10, to 10, but you still see a 1k advantage on Boom's side. So Neon, uh, if they want to start overtaking and snowballing harder, they need to get their combo off. They could easily take the Roche, but there's not much team fight here from Boom unless Mikado lands his combination. So Neon has greater control in that tight area. Again, they're just seemingly happy with finding farm, which is kind of working out for them anyway. I do believe they are feeling a lot more confident with Skem start, and the fact that Chrono, there's really nothing to stop the Void from having a good time in that Chrono. No natural counters to stop him from just doing that damage he needs to do. What do you think he's farming for right now on that Void? Like, he's he's been holding that, that gold for a bit of time now. He hasn't queued anything up yet. Hmm. Maybe... Maybe Mjolnir. We've seen a lot of Voids just rush that. I think when they do pick it up. Uh, you could opt for a Manta as well if you're worried about control. That could be a really good option to preempt that Orchid that we're still waiting on from Mikado. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it was either one from Skem. He is just kind of just building up. You know, he is in no rush to reveal his hand, and uh, Neon has been playing pretty darn slow, all things considered. Uh, Boom is still slowly building up, and Dreamo Cell might become an issue down the line. Like, he has that. If you're up, he's had it for a while. Is opting for the BKB next. So all the control, all the damage beyond that Chrono starts to grow a little less relevant to that Ursa. Looks like the uh, well, the BKB going to be coming up on Skem. That is the smartest play to make as well, because you've got the one real thing that can deal with you on that Chrono is maybe the Arrow, maybe the Paralyzing Cask, or maybe even the Tornado from Makoto, but... All that will just be blocked out by the BKB charge of the face void and now hide. Does also have the Yules up there to try and set up for these arrows, but even that Yules can be no good into that BKB of Skem. Still both teams not really going towards that Roshan pit yet, surprisingly enough. It's like uh, Dreamer so wants to try and secure his, uh, his Yasha and BKB up himself first before he does go into that Roshan. They are also very confident seems on the side of Boom to, that that the side of Neon won't go for the Roche themselves. Like, they haven't got any wards around that Roche pit. 
apart from that one of the uh, the Radiant Triangle. But they have been fairly yes. confident that Neon won't actually make that that rotation in. Which so far yeah. they've been correct about. It could cost them down the line. Um, but yeah, it does look like they've tempered out uh, both sides in terms of where they want to go. There is a smoke from Boom, though. And the Kodo will be on the front lines there in the Ghost War. Play hard, gonna get caught out here by FBZ. They'll start the sun race straight away, but the arrow connect onto Play Hard. They're not feeling confident, however, with Rappi in that nether ward. So Play Hard now gonna turn around. Yopage there with the Aether Emmet does not connect. Kescute still being snowballed on, but it doesn't really stun him up, and he'll still be okay. He'll just pop the death ward, but now should definitely go down and does. It's only a pause five being lost on Boom Esports, but they're unwilling to keep the fight up and it just seems to be that, that Egg Chrono again just scaring them. They haven't seen it out yet once. So they're just not willing to commit all the way here up against Neon Esports. And they'll just... We'll get back to farming. Yeah, this is really starting to play into Neon. I mean, they're winning out these fights. Granted, not the biggest wins, but they still are building up for themselves without having to expend their big combination. Dreamer Cell is trying to get the Roche, but that is scanned out, so Neon can punish this one very hard. Well, Dreamer Cell just taking it for free. They're coming in. Shan's gonna be there. Dreamer Cell needs to take that Roshan quickly. He's gonna try. Aegis is taken oh. by Yopage. He does jump in. Dreamer Cell went for the risk. It does not pay off. Now the eggs dropped as well. He's been stunned through the BKB. Skem, do you have to commit Chrono? He does, just to make sure he can survive. Also pops his BKB as well, so maybe a bit wasteful there with Neon with the BKB charge and the and the Chrono, but just in case, as Dreamer Soul had turned around and done a lot of damage over to that void. That's uh that's a big win for Neon. Again, Dreamer Soul chose the most awkward time to go in, and that's the effect of not having a ward by the pit. You don't know where the enemy team is. And Neon managed to manipulate that really well. And you look at Yopage this game, he does have a Desolator up with that Spirit Vessel. He's hitting really hard on that Void Spirit, going for the Ags next. So the control coming out here from Neon is looking better and better. <sighs> Boom right now, they're just... Yopage? Ooh. Yeah, he, he TP'd in, but I believe he got an arrow straight to the face. And, uh... Well, that's your Aegis gone. That's not the greatest of news there for your Pash. Hmm. Yeah, that's a bit of a massive waste still. They want to keep forcing the fights. Yules, Arrow, going to connect there on the Phoenix. Genuel, probably going to get bursted here. They silence up the Tusk as well, so no Snowball coming in to save. And it looks like Playhard might die. He does get a Snowball off in time, but it's not good enough. They'll lose both their supports on the side of Neon. And it seems as though Boom Esports want to try and set up now for this T1 bot tower. They'll be able to get it fairly easily. In fact, they might go for more. Looks like they do get out. Yeah, it's a good show of force from Boom. It's starting to push it back onto Neon. Not the biggest losses for Neon. You do have to be careful now. If Boom can pull off their execution, then it is potent. You're at the point where you can pump out the alacrity onto the Ursa. So he hits like a massive truck and that becomes concerning for Neon. Um, you would start to look at Skem and really rely on the Chrono to get that control out. He is going to have his next Chrono fairly soon and his farm is pretty darn close towards that Mjolnir. So his damage output is going to skyrocket in just a short bit of time. So looks like they might want to get a play now. We're gonna try. Quick smoke up, running into that radiant side triangle. Dreamer Soul's gonna be ready there. How do you get up this uh, the staircase? That's the real problem. Then you all smoke broken. Scam gonna be in with the glimmer cape. Hide. We'll be able to leap away for now. And uh, looks like he'll be just fine. If they want to try and reinitiate here, Makoto. They popped that Moonlight Shadow. No, it looks like Neon, they're the ones to back out again and... Well, Boom Esports, they'll just kind of let them leave. They're not really too interested in fighting into those big ulties. 
Yeah, I think this is perfectly fine for Boom. Like, you look at how the network's going despite those kills. It's 4k the side of Boom. So they're still finding net worth. Neon's still not pulling ahead. And if they don't get these fights out and start to force an advantage, then they'll continue to slip in net worth. Dream Assault's just farming way too efficiently. Mjolnir up now on the Void. The scam, he's got plenty of added damage. Just needs a chance to use it though. So they might have that chance soon as play hard mid lane. Trying to defend the tier 1 tower. It will go down regardless. And, uh, well, again, they just won't take a team fight. They're, they're going to play this very safe. They'll back off. Dream is still leading in terms of net worth on that Ursa. So he won't mind just continually dragging out the game and farming up. Maybe up until that point where he has the Abyssal Blade. So that way he, he can feel confident to try and just Abyssal up that Faceless Void and burst him down. But for now, he's going to be going into that... Well, still queuing up that Yasha. No, he avoids it. He does nah. go for the Basher first. Yeah, I think that makes a lot more sense. Just uh, go straight for that Abyssal that really puts that Ursa online. Allows you to get your jumps in, get the NPC. control out from his vital. He's been caught out mid lane. He's in big, big trouble. He'll try and commit the Stampede as Arrow flies through as well. FBZ still dying to the Sunray. Januel just... On point with it this time around. Now even Keskew getting caught by that Aether Remnant and he will go down. Nice couple pickups there for the side of Neon Esports. Yeah, it's, uh, it's starting to be the most common targets they pick off. It does seem that only Mikado, FBZ and really Keskew have been out of position so far. Which is somewhat concerning because Dream Assault is still having that free run. But Neon does get to find a lot more for their efforts they hold on to their ult still as the game continues on slowly 7 to 14 still a 3k advantage for boom it is mildly concerning with how much space dream is getting i mean he's gonna have his abyssal timing relatively quick considering this kind of game where you're not seeing much activity from the ursa so once he has that abyssal he can just immediately focus on the concerning targets, maybe get the lockdown onto Yapage, take him out of the fights immediately, and suddenly you don't have to deal with a highly disruptive uh, Void Spirit in this match. He's gonna get lucky as well, Dream Missile. He does get the Paladin Sword now. Later on, when he does, you know, opt for the Satanic pickup, it's gonna be a very nice feeling for Dream Missile. Just having that much lifesteal added on. So they'll go for a smoke attempt now. Moonlight Shadow popped as well. Playhard, going to be the first one to get spotted there by Keskut, but Playhard did see him. And so this uh, this smoke slash moonlight shadow is going to really mean nothing. So the rest of Neon are just quite split up and they'll just keep forcing in the bot wave and trying to split the side of, trying to force the side of Boom Esports to come back and defend. It's also bought more time now for Skem to go for his own Satanic on that faceless void. And, uh, he's going to have that very, very soon. I mean, you know, Parsh, he, he decided better off going for that uh, that Aghanim Scepter. Looks like he goes for the Yule Scepter first. Yeah. It uh, gives him a few more options for control. I think that's been key for Neon. Uh, it doesn't feel like they lack damage. They've just been holding off on Chrono because they don't want to expend that control spell. So... Just looking for more ways to pin a single hero down from your page is always nice. And still smoke Anywhere. right next to... Yeah, they broke it straight away. Mid lane, however, they did catch out your page. The Yule's into the arrow. Yupage commits his own Yules now, but Dream Assault is right on top. Dissimulate a three-man chrono. Skem trying to save that mid laner of his. Yupage will be able to walk away, but what do you do now? There was no damage out from oh, Skem. No. The Basher comes in. No. The Hoof Stomp, he does die in both. They are still chasing, however, they at least find Makoto and Keskew. So it's not all bad news. In fact, Yupage jumping back in now after Hyde, but another arrow. This time will be taken by the task. Snowball, Hyde. Should die here as well. He doesn't have leap charges. Uh, eventually, he will probably burn out to the sun range. Januar will pick up the kill. It's a three for one trade for Neon. Yeah, that uh... might be more. Yapage, they're still going. 
He does get decrepified up. That means they can't finish him off. Egg has been dropped as well. FBZ, he's in trouble. He may get burnt out again by the Sunray. He does. They at least get Rappi as a trade. But it's Dream is so up against the world. Hyde does buy back. It looks like that'll be it. But Neon Esports, they definitely got the better end of that trade. Yeah, it did cost them a buyback, I believe, on Januel. But overall, they do find the bigger wins, and it is starting to pile up there. Neon does turn it from a 4k lead just to 2k for Boom. This is giving Boom the opportunity to start to ward around for Roche, though. They take control of the outpost back, and they look to set their sights onto the next Roche, which is still about a minute and a half away. So a lot of time for Neon to react, for them to wait out the next Chrono and Egg. And you have a Mask of Madness up and running on Scam, so he's got a lot more sustain and damage to come out in that Chrono. He's probably going to have a lot more success the next time that spell is off. He was really lacking that, uh, that damage last Chrono around. Perhaps the MOM will help, but it does mean his Satanic's going to be a bit later on. He may even decide to go Butterfly first. Because he uh, really just needs more of that damage. Roshan going to be another 50 seconds away. Dreamer saw having a look through the Roshan pit, but won't find anything. Neon Esports. Arrow. Going to connect there onto Chen Yuel. It was just meant to be a blind kind of scouting arrow. Does end up landing. So Neon now, they may just try and go for a smoke attempt here. In fact, nobody brought the smoke out. Has been it's really going to be the fight that determines who gets this next Roshan. Of course, Boom are already waiting around for it, and I believe this is going to be the third Roshan of the game, is it? No, the second, yeah. right? They, is it the third or the second? I, I think it's still the second. Uh, I only remember the first one, which was stolen by your posh. I think it's the second with cheese. Uh, we'll, we'll find out soon. Soon enough. Yeah, second. All right. So smoke up from Boom. Neon, do the same. Moonlight Shadow also popped there. They should run straight into each other. But Boom's going to take the long way around. Play hard, gonna try and take the outpost back, but it's too late for that. Sunray and Decrep will heal him up though. FBZ now just trying to run away. Sunstrike will be avoided, and now the Chrono. Scam, he found two. Kesku will go down. The enrage was there from Dreamer Cell, however, so he'll just turn around and man fight this. Can they fight back? Scam, he gets oh. stunned up by FBZ. They do get the kill, and now Hyde will also go down. Looks like Yepage is still trying to fight back. The tornado is there though. Makoto with the control. They will take him out. There was a buyback out of Skem, but it didn't really mean anything. He couldn't make it back to the team fight in time. And so that ends up being a, a two for four trade. Keskew buying back as well on the Witch Doctor. The Hyde dying on the tail end of that team fight, but with that, they go straight for that Roshan pit. Yeah, that's going to be a big take for Boom at Neon. Again, not quite the execution you were looking for. Dreamo Cell, that was his Abyssal reveal. So he has the control. He held onto his BKB longer as well. Like, uh, Skem was forced to use it in his Chrono, so the moment the Chrono was out, he had no spell immunity, which costed him. Just meant that the control was coming out from Boom anyway, and with that set of trades, Boom, they look to take more objectives and start reeling control back in on this map. Yeah, absolutely. Boom Esports, they'll just keep going now. Alacrity popped onto Dreamer so, and he'll take that tower that much faster. Like with Alacrity, he has so much damage. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's that combo. We're at that point in the game where you do have enough levels in the, your orbs to really get the Alacrity up to a very strong point. They just can't defend either. They don't have the Chrono up. It's still a minute away, and so they'll take the tier three tower on Boom and they'll just back out of there. Because that bot wave is pushing in. So FBZ, he's gonna be out to defend that. An 8k net worth lead now for Boom Esports. With that Aegis Cheese, they're not going to be uh, too afraid of dying anytime soon here on Dreamer Cell. Just going to be a matter of whether they try and go high ground again with that Aegis Cheese. Whether they'll just let it expire. Yeah, it's uh... They've still got considerable amount of time on the Aegis, I believe around 
three and a half minutes left, so there is a leeway there for them to just kind of regroup, maybe get some a little bit more farm out before opting for that next fight. And I think, again, you've got a bit of a window where Chrono's not up, although you don't have much. So by the time the next fight rolls around, Neon will have the Chrono Egg combo. They really need to land that perfectly. They need to, they need the egg to be protected by the Chrono, otherwise John Yuel is vulnerable from a lot of these heroes and is going to be prone to just get blown up. So we'll see just how much Neon can counterplay there. Looks like uh, Boom does want to play aggressive here. See who they catch out first. Perhaps they run straight into Jen Yuel, but then they're going to need to get that silence off quick. He doesn't just Icarus dive away. Yep, BZ is actually going for the Aghanim Scepter now on the Centaur, so... Much more sustain coming out once he does have that item up. He's uh, been a real pain in the butt for Neon Esports thus far in this game. Yeah, it's uh, going to get trickier for Neon to pin them down once the Ags is up. Just that free patting ruins the the control they get from play hard with the shards, as long as that stampede is up. So that's something for Neon to get a bit worried about as well. I think uh, I think Yupa I really feel like Yupaj going for the Yules has hurt his... I mean, it really has hurt his timing on the Ags, but that silence would probably turn the outcomes of a lot of these fights like the supports have no way of purging that off and that would force earlier bkb usages from boom which could could have given neon the control so he, they do need that eggs to come out from your paw she's very close just like 700 off but they're not gonna have that time before this next fight uh boom is going Oops. to be marching in that jungle Oops. We'll see how much longer this uh, this DC takes here from Hyde. Well, not Hyde, rather, but Januel. It's a third of plus uh, win probability, say, right now. You're sitting at 82% for Boom Esports. But I think it's uh, I think it's a fair number. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I think you always have to give some allowance towards Neon because of the Chrono. Because, you know, there's nothing that really counters Chrono in this game. So you will have some opportunities, right, to to really turn it back if you get the right outcome. And for now, Skem, I mean, he's had some pretty decent chronos. What is item build though? Like his damage has not looked good. Like he has Mjolnir and Mask, but it really isn't enough to put a dent on Ursa, especially since Dreamo Cell just keeps popping in rage beforehand anyway. Yeah, he gets it off every time. Just got the uh Real quick reaction speeds there. As soon as you see oh, Skem yeah. coming in, just has it up. You just can't get through the enrage of the Ursa. Not to mention Dreamasaur is going to be going for a, an Aghanim Scepter after his Manta style. So once the Ags is up, that gets even harder. Ooh. On top of the uh, the Ags of the Centaur, so then you're basically dealing zero damage, almost giving <laughs> health away back to that Ursa. Now boom. Still smoked up, gonna run into that dire jungle. They'll won't spot out your Paj yet, but they know they're around there somewhere. Skem's gonna TP out, so now you haven't got the Chrono around. Play hard, Cypher, they'll all get out of there. Well, Genuel, he does oh. barely get out. They had the Yules, but they didn't commit it. Yeah, it's uh, a missed opportunity for Boom. Neon gonna be counting their lucky stars to get out there in time. And Boom just wasting a bit of time there. Still building up farm though, and I'm sure Dream Assault doesn't mind too much. She's finishing cute. that Manta into the Ag. So. Snowball, Orchid gonna be out though with the Stampede. They're gonna try and turn around now with the Sunstrike and the Cold Snap. It's a lot of damage onto Play Hard. They'll throw that, throw that Tornado out as well, but Arrow won't connect. Now the Chaos Meteor being thrown out as well. FBZ going in, but the Sunray's healing up Play Hard. They just can't kill the Tusk. He's still alive. And now you Paj. Oh, his no. will go scam. scam. What's that Chrono? What? The Egg is there. Scam, he'll pop the BKB. He'll try and fight back, but there's no way to fight back. Hide. He's dropping low on the Mirana, but won't die either. 
And now they do have skim control up thanks to FBZ. Dream Cell will come in. They force stuff him out of there, but it's not going to be good enough. They can't heal him up either. Now Rappi's in trouble. They'll find oh, the Phoenix as God. well. Oh boy. That was not the chrono. And uh, Yopash, oh. it's not the time, Yopash. It's not the time, sir. Whew. Oh boy. That was. Man, that was that was hard to watch, I have to tell you, Mike. Whew, he was tr I, I'm not sure what Skem was aiming for. Right? The only person there was Hyde who managed to leap out. Even if he caught Hyde, that wasn't going to be enough, and this is the opportunity Boom was looking for. They go straight to high ground. They still have the Aegis. They don't have the cheese, but that doesn't matter too much when you know those ults are down. That'll be that mid-rax going down now. No buybacks left on Neon, really, apart from Januel. How do you defend this? I mean, you've got the tier 2 bot tower, at least. If Boom realizes, they could try to go for tier 4s. FBZ, he wants to try it. You've got the Alacrity there on Makoto to speed things up quite a bit. Dream is going to start with that, uh... Not even sure what that building is, but they take it out. It's just literally called a building. <laughs> Now goes after the yeah. tier 4. They do repair kit both of them up, so that will buy them enough time. So instead, I think, boom, they'll just have to go for that bot tier 2 tower. And uh, maybe make their way up to that tier 3 later on. Yeah, it's uh, not too worrying. Again, there is a lot of open time because of the reliance of Neon on the Chrono. Still 40 seconds away isn't too bad for Neon, so they can get one last outer, uh, upper high ground defense going for themselves, but boom, they've widened that gap. 19k lead, that's the last charge of the repair kit as well, so there's no way to slow it down without item. Yeah, Dream is so, it looks like he might just leave this. So Yapaj does just jump in and, well, there's the Aegis going as well, which is really why he was trying to back off anyway. So they get a hell of a lot out with that Aegis. Two Raxes, three repair kit charges, multiple deaths on the other uh, side of Neon Esports. And, uh, well, you leave the base now, you've got tier 4 items to look for. So it's, uh, there's really no losing here for Boom, it seems. No, they're, they're finding everything they want, including in itemization, FBZ. He's got his eggs, and you're just about, what is it, 1.2k away from Dream of Salt's eggs. So, the tanky Ursa, the, the chrono kills that you're looking for, if Boom play their cards right, and get their spell use right, you're probably not even finding those kills in the Chrono anymore. I, I doubt it. It feels like you weren't finding kills in the Chrono f from 20 minutes ago. They just haven't had the damage output. Yeah, just it's, uh, it, it, it's really lacking in terms of the itemization. And I mean, skem has been farming well. It's just he hasn't progressed past the Mjolnir Madness. He really needed that butterfly up and running. And even at this point, if he does pick it up, it, that doesn't feel like it's going to be enough anymore. I, I think if you went Divine, it wouldn't be enough. In Rage plus Aghanim <laughs> Scepter Stampede, you're literally doing no damage. So yeah. The Ags gives him 40% reduction in damage. The Enrage gives him an 80% reduction in damage. So, uh... so you're doing 120% reduced damage <laughs> to Ursa, right? In theory... <laughs> You should be giving him 20% 20, 20 of that back <laughs> as change. So, uh... Oh, boy. Yeah, it's... Uh, so, even if he fought a Divine, that is literally zero damage he is doing to that <laughs> Ursa. Yeah, that's not going to be great for Neon. They've, they've got to find a way to turn that around, Oh, but... hoof stomp. They found Genuel. Icarus dive? No. Oh, Cold boy. snap is there from Makoto. He cancels it. Ah, this is, uh... Getting tricky. Neon and uh, they've they've got to find something. I think one big issue. Wow, it's yeah, he's on your page. Genuel had to buy back just in case. Sunstrike. Oh, oh, oh boy. Ooh. Your page. That was a. Uh, oh, his uh, face would be feeling a bit hot right now. It was right in front of him. <laughs> oh yeah, that is a uh, pretty Scam. scary. Skem, Arrow, gonna oh. fly through. They got a hoof stomp off onto Rappi, forcing the Aeon Disc, and now Skem, you've got the Chrono there, but you don't want to commit it like this. He'll just run away. Now, I believe Boom Esports are just gonna keep Neon locked in the base until that next Roshan might be up.
We're going to find that in about five seconds when it is going to be up. But up until that point, Neon's going nowhere. You know exactly where they are. Oh, no. There, there's just no way to get out. They don't have the best D push against these super creeps. They have some good damage, but not quite enough to make it comfy. So, Boom really does have control on the map. You look at Dreamo Cell, he does have the Ags. It's up, and he's actually going for the Blessing, so he just wants that free slot. It's gonna be a while until he gets the MKB and the Blessing, but once you have that in the your side, I mean, I, I don't know if there's any point in pointing out what Dreamo Cell has, because he's he's not dying. He's not dying anymore. No, he, he doesn't need the Aegis either, by the way. He just... <laughs> I, I don't think you need both live streamers, so don't be greedy now. The Roshan is going to be up in a minute and a half anyway, so it's one of those mid-range kind of Roshan timers. It does buy Neon a bit of time here to get some kind of core pickups up, and of course we saw Skem, he does have the Butterfly now. Not really up to him though. It's, uh, well, it's up to him to land the Chrono, but he's going to get it at the perfect time. Uh, well, now Boom, thinking about going in here, but Neon will back off, back into the base. Move stop, gonna catch out your Paj, Cataclysm, they'll commit the Chrono, but they have the damage without the Stampede being committed, or do they? He's not dead yet! No. Now he'll pop the Stampede and go for a run, Snowball afterwards, but they just can't kill him! Now Dream is still gonna turn around, going after Rappi, no turning around back onto the Void, FBZ is still alive, he's still running away even with the Spirit Vessel charge on top, now Playhard's trying to run, but all he can do is Snowball, he'll try and blink out. Meanwhile, Dream Assault is still going, by the way. There goes Play Hard. Dream Assault, is he actually going to die? He pops the Enrage. That Lime Train is doing a lot of damage with the Sun Ray, but he'll walk out. Now the Yules will come out from Hyde. Set up here. There's no arrow available. Your pass jumping back in. Oh. No, there is no damage. There is no damage. Dream Assault, he'll just heal up with the Paladin Sword now. Snowball, they'll go back onto FBC. Dream Assault pops oh, the Enrage no. again. Play hard, he's gonna die. Your Page trying to go after Hyde. I don't know if you can actually kill him off. The Orchid will come out. He'll use up through it, but the arrow is gonna connect now. And Makono should have follow up damage, but no. Another Yule's coming out. FBZ has a stun, and it won't matter. Your Page just dies. The GG's called. They don't oh, have buybacks boy. left. And Boom Esports. A big congrats to them, John. They're through to the upper bracket final. They'll be versing Geek Fam tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That was. Quite the dominant showing from Boom. We expected this one to be to be a lot more even, based on how both teams went in groups. But man, someone must have woken up Boom to really get them going because that did not look fair. That it did not. That does mean that Neon Esports will drop down. Uh, they will have to play a second series later on tonight. That's going to be up against TNC Predator. Uh, so it might be a bit of a hard day here for Neon as they are going to have two series in total. Not too hard, but you're not going to be feeling great after this uh, after this first series up against Boom. Still, they'll have to regather and just try to sort themselves out. Up until then, though, our next series is going to be Fnatic versus Reality Rift uh, in the lower bracket. So we'll see which one of those guys gets knocked out. And, uh, it is MLP Dota. It's John X Fire. We'll be back in about 15 to 20 minutes to start off our second series in the lower bracket. We'll see you then.